In episode 12 of the Hyper Motard rebuild, we finally get down and dirty and techie with someone who actually knows what they're doing. <laughs> Not a man with a chisel and a hammer. Mind you, there is a chisel and a hammer involved in this video. Even the professionals use a chisel and a hammer sometimes. So today we're gonna to strip down the whole bottom end of the Hyper Motard engine. I've been up to see Nelly from Desmo Works, link to his channel up the top there if you haven't seen it already. Um, basically, last week I took the engine up there, we did a massive strip down. This video is going to be very technical, loads of tips, loads of tricks of how to strip that um, hypermotard engine. You know, that engine is used in a lot of different models, that engine bottom end is the same, been the same for years, you know. So a lot of tips to be learned here in this video and it's all a little bit technical. So without further ado, let's get to Nanny's house and, and roll the intro. So we're here in Nelly's Garage, the engine builder extraordinaire, I like to call him. <laughs> so if you don't know Nelly, he's got his own YouTube channel called Desmo Works, basically stripping engines, all sorts of yep. stuff really, aren't there? Anything petrol head related. It's all on there. But predominantly bikes at the moment. Yeah, but perhaps some <laughs> car stuff coming Car as stuff well. coming soon, yeah. But he's worked on it. How many years you've been stripping Ducati engines, you say? <sighs> well, the first one I took apart would have been 2009. 2009, you've worked on what, Panigales? Panigales, 1098s, uh, 999s, 749s, 998s, 916s, 996s, 748s. If, if it's a Ducati, I, I've he's taken he's it apart. It. Well, I've got it about an hour and a half. We spent an hour and a half just looking around the garage chatting. We haven't been here an hour and a half and done nothing yet. We, yeah. thought we better actually do some work while we're here. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the fabled Ducati engine out the back of the car. We've just unwrapped all the cellophane off it. I haven't touched this for probably a year and a half is when I yeah. took this down. Um, we're going to strip it completely today. As I mentioned, what I've decided is, you know, I did a rattle can spray job on this originally. When I bought this bike, this the whole project was just to really tighten up the engine a little bit. Now we're going to break this down completely, split the casings. I'm going to get all the casings professionally Cerakoted. Crank's going to be balanced. We've got the ported heads to go back on. So basically we're going to be getting down and dirty with the Hypermotard engine and see what we find inside. You said you've had a quick look at the pistons and you said they actually look Yeah, look pretty clean, pretty, clean. pretty tidy. But we're gonna split this down now, crack it open, take bits off of it and sort of run you through a bit of the process really, just to demystify yep. the Ducati engine because I ain't got a clue. Okay, so the first bits we'll do is just get off all of the ancillaries yep. on the outside. Off the top, we'll take the pistons off. Then we'll strip off the alternator side. Um, the, the biggest problem here is usually taking these nuts off because, yeah, yeah, they're... I saw it's a ridiculous amount of... Was it 150 new meters or something? Oh, no, it's more than that. Is it's it? oh, off the top I of my head. You're testing me now. It's 200 and something off the top of my head. So yes. um, coming off is easy because yeah. you just use a rattle gun. Yeah, yeah. You know, so just pop it off. Doing it off is lots of sweaty grunts. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> and it does sometimes get quite embarrassing in trying to do that, particularly as you get older and your back gives out more and more often. <laughs> Um, similar thing on this side, so it's uh, 180 newton meters on the on the clutch. Because yeah. um, we've got the the clutch mod, which Tran does. He sent me that as well. Oh, the silent plate the, ones. Yeah, the, yeah. the stop that reduces okay. the rattle a little bit. Or yeah, stop so that's the wear on the actual basket. I think is the main idea. Yeah, it just it? adds a couple of extra plates basically yeah. at the back of the clutch, and then yeah. stop. You, you keep the you keep the pulled in rattle, but you don't have the rattle constantly. Uh, so, so, yes. Yeah, yeah that's it. I'd right, say, it's been a year and a half since I've touched this project, so it's all it's all coming back to me. <laughs> <laughs> How many engines you got in bits tucked away in here, then? You got oh god, lots. You got lots of bits. Yeah, I mean, look, like, there's about six heads there, and god knows what else, and pistons and barrels. <laughs> That's the bottom end of my nine one six that I started filming. Yeah, That's pre pandemic, and I need to get the barrels away to be um, sorted, recoated. Oh, recoated. Yeah. And then um, up up top, I've got six, seven engines, I, I think. And then I've got a unit that's got oh, right another there. five complete engines in it. Really? Yeah. What, they, what, 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 the, what sort of engines are we talking? Oh, everything. Um, so I've got bits of 996 RS, so race bikes. So I've got Troy Bayliss's cases from Czechoslovakia and Bruno when he crashed the engine. Um, yeah. yeah, just 749s. 
uh, 748s, 916, 996, um, Panagales. I've got a 916 SPS that's okay, going to be a really? future oh, yeah. project. It's a bike that's stripped down that I've just got the bits for and I want to restore it back yeah. to sort of pucker standard, yeah. if you like. As you see, like primary gear just pulls off. Yep. Be careful though, because there is a oh, that I'm going to drop. <laughs> so I'm going to say be careful and I'm going to throw it all over the floor. So there's a little washer that goes behind your primary gear. Okay. So make sure that that goes back in if you're ever doing the build, because otherwise your primary gear will sit too close to the casing. Oh, okay. You grind the casing away, basically. Nice. Then the oil pump is literally three bolts. And the bottom. That's stiffy, stiff, stiff. There we go. And that just pops out uh, from behind the primary right, drive yeah. gear. You just notice there, there's two seals. Uh -huh. Again, you've got to be careful. They, they typically tend to sit in the cases, so you even need to make sure they're in the cases or on the back of there. But if you get a full rebuild kit, you should get new yeah, ones of them. Yeah. And again, you'll notice there, there's one there. Yeah. That is the oil feed into the clutch case. Uh, okay. Basically, that comes out of there, comes into your case, and then it goes up. Right. And where this uh, end of the crankshaft sits in the end of your clutch case, it puts the oil feed that goes right. into your big end bearings. Uh, okay. So, and that's why that's that's a critical seal because yeah, okay. if that if that goes, you're, you're gonna you're gonna drop your oil into yeah. your um, comrades, and they're gonna slowly melt away and cause you a very expensive rebuild bill. Lock washer out. Oh, I see you've got the same Takati special tools as I've got. <laughs> <laughs> the chisel's out. The chisel's out. Right, so we'll leave that side for now. Yeah. And you notice I've just left that on there. So it's pretty much like a your traditional sort of fly flywheel holding tool that you'd find on a jack bike. Yeah. But this locks to the cases, which just uh, makes it a little bit easier. Oh, it bolts into the. Yeah. Lovely. Another special tool I ain't got. Just need to stop it spinning, yeah. basically. Big gun. Big gun's out. There we go. Clean so not only do you have a massive torque applied to it when it's built, but you yeah. also have Loctite holding it in as well. So it can be a bit of a bitch to get that off. So that's your intermediate timing shaft. Right. And so that's a once only yeah. use on that. And um, you'll always know a cheap rebuild if you've seen one of those been reused. No, really. So the drive belt pulley, spacer, first gear wheel, then a key. And that come off easier than I thought. I thought that would drive for a little bit. And this one is held in by lock washer. Yeah, okay. So, um, the lock washer's got a little tang that sits in against the gear. Yeah. What you've got to be careful of is when you're tightening them up, sometimes if you don't put a little bit of oil on it, each side of it, it will grab it and turn it uh, and split okay. that off. Right, okay, good tip. That is on. on a, like a, um, a chamfer, basically. Ah, okay, so you right, you It's well and truly wellied on. You need a puller for that. Then. And you need a special puller. So that just sits in there like so. I'm glad I came to you already and didn't tackle this myself. <laughs> I, now, I always get the questions about, could you do it without the special tools? I mean, you can build an engine without special tools. Yeah. All the special tools do is make it easier for yeah. you to build the engine. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that's the piece that people forget is, yeah, you could find a way to get that off with standard bearing pullers. But and you risk damaging the teeth. And it's, and it's hard to do because yeah. usually you get free 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 yeah. leg pullers yeah. so you're not going to be able to get no, in on that, that side, side no. you risk damaging the case if it jumps yeah. you know so if you're doing more than one engine it's worth sort of spending the 80 quid for the mm. the proper tool um but again you, you could possibly find a way to do it you could always do garage mechanics i think uh, no bush mechanics as some people call it don't they right so this is a bit nerving so that's got a bit of pressure on it And it does tend to spring, so just be careful because uh, sometimes it goes with quite force. And sometimes they've been on here that long. I think what I'm going to do on this one, just to be safe, 
Let's put a bit of heat on the wheel first. So just gonna heat this up a little bit to get the gear wheel to expand. Yeah. Just takes off a little bit of that stiction. You don't have to put a lot of heat in there, just small amount of heat transference yeah, will just allow it to expand or just a little bit, make our job a bit easier. I did say an hour. <laughs> Clock sticking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's not um And obviously you have to be careful about how much force you can well, yeah, of course. put in it because it's the end of the crank. Jeez, that's why I don't like that job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quick on your feet anyway. <laughs> it's still warm. Yeah, it's still warm, isn't it? So that very small amount yeah, of heat, heat applied is, is... makes quite a difference. All right, and <clears throat> drop the key. It's never, it's never just where you want it, is it? Oh, there it is. Look, oh, there we go. Well just as I was going to give up. Well done, that man. Where that sat on there. Just see over the over the period of time, yeah, yeah. it's just sort of like. Is that like a bush on there? Is that actually no? It's actually part of the crank. Which yeah, it's part of the crank. It's like part of the crank. Yeah. Just um, sits hard up against the backside of the right. crank. And then what you've got there, that's the primary gear drive. So what's going basically to your drive, and then that back back gear wheel drives your oil pump. Right. So this side is completely ready to okay. split. Move pull off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because although we've still got the keys and the retaining clip in the intermediate shaft. We'll release it fully on the other side so the cases can still split right, off. Yeah. Right, so what we'll do now is we'll take the pistons off because they're easily accessible. Okay. And that's only a case of just pulling out the circlips. So all it is, standard circlip piss. So little space to get sharp implement in. Just lift it out. Because this is another thing Twan said. He said you, you really need to put the pistons into the heads and then yeah do, you do you can damage these said you can damage the rings quite easily if you try and do it it's better now. when you so disassembling is not an issue because you just yeah. you pop pop the cylinder yeah, off yeah, it's of there it as you can out, see yeah. just take out when you're putting it back together Compressing have all have all the rings compressed gapped properly inside the cylinder and then you drop the cylinder on yeah. and then put it a yeah. bit messy because you've got the gasket sealant at the bottom yeah, when you're putting yeah. it together thought, but... if you haven't got the feel for how you actually put the circlips in you're going to be struggling to try and do it and then it might it'll fall in the engine you know, yeah i could just see it dropping in the engine they'll be like oh my god <laughs> pretty standard wear no no burning underneath the piston so you've not had any overheating issues oh, if weird. you get burning underneath the piston it's a sign that the engine's been overheating because the uh, oil on the bottom yeah, of the yeah, piston burns almost, and then yeah. you get a bit of carbon build up there you'd expect that yeah and actually that's a, that's a pretty nice burn yeah so you've got some carbon on the very outside but you've got a very clean burn there yeah. i mean i'm assuming you've not touched this no, but I no, it look, just, looks to be yeah. nicely running engine really yeah, that's good to know that's good to know when you put new piston ring clips in, you should always put new ones yeah, of these in. Yeah. So they work on sort of expansion like a spring. So yeah, nothing standard sort of wear. Yeah. No scoring on the piston skirts. That's it. It's had so about, said, I think it had four and a half thousand miles, so it, did, it didn't have, it hasn't done much. And again, pretty nice pretty combustion nice as well. Yeah. So whoever had it, had it pretty well set up. Yeah. So this all should pop off. Because we've taken the nut off. All one big assembly. Yeah. So you've got your starter sprag, so that does come out. That's the sprag bearing you'll hear people talk about. Sprag bearing, okay. Um, oh, and this is in lovely condition actually. Now what you're looking for on there is any sort of dents or pitting. Yeah. Now if that was the case, you'd need a new wheel and a new bearing, uh, but okay. you've got nice uniform wear across there, so it's not laboured at all. And actually, you know, although the, the oil's in quite good condition, so it's been a good quality oil in there as well. It's all sounding good, it's all sounding good. It's all things you just don't know, do you? Until yeah. you strip it down, you don't know what you've got. You? Well, you're always running running the risk of well, and that, taking somebody into this, really. apart. Do you know what I mean? Is if and I'm going to do all this work, let's, let's make sure it's all done properly. You've got the spacer, so this is the needle bearing yeah. that the, the flywheel sits on. You've got a little spacer washer. And then you'll notice here we've got the main drive gear if I can turn that now, this probably can't. Well, anyway, what I was going to yeah. do is align that with, you've got a timing mark there and a timing oh, okay. mark there. When you turn those around. So that's got factory paint on it there, is it just to mark? Yeah, in fairness, the, the factory markings tend to stay throughout the life inside oh, the engine. 
Oh, so... What the hell's that? Uh... <laughs> it's like a marshmallow in there. That's a bit of my... Uh... How'd that got in there? Oh, did you cover that? Oh, that's oh, where the timing yeah, mark yeah, goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was thinking, God, you've used an engine for that long with a piece of paper in it. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> that just pops off. Okay, there's another key in the shaft there. That's probably quite solid. And then what you can see that's left here now, yeah. that we've got to take off, we've got the intermediate, dry, uh, intermediate timing shaft drive gear yep. so you can see that's just another tab yeah, washer, tab washer. Um, gear selector fork which is only held on by two and then we got the star wheel oh, which is bolted in mm. oh, that's the first time i've seen yeah. that assembly yeah i mean it, it, it's evidently um a slightly later engine normally what you've got is a um boss that sits in here that has two cutouts in it and then um, use a circlip to hold this wheel in, right. but obviously this is bolted. Yeah, yeah. I was just slightly nervous as it was coming out because yeah, no, it was so bound bound by the um, Loctite, lock tight, but no, it's all good. Now there's a few bits you need to check on this when it comes out. Okay. So when it comes apart, you're obviously checking that it's got spring tension. Right. Um, not this big one here, but just this, this little return spring here. And then what you're looking for, there's any rounding on the end of these. Okay. Little drive teeth, and they look good. They're pretty sharp. I mean, some polishing when they've been used, yeah. but they've certainly not ground away. So that's that's good to keep. Good. And they basically just operate on the back of these teeth in this gap here, right. and that's what drives your selector drum round to okay. select your gears. Right. And again, oh, you've got one of these really delicate washers yeah. that you need to be so we'll use new ones when we yeah, put this yeah, in yeah. but again this little tang that sits, sits in there, there if if somebody doesn't if they fit this dry and it catches with the nut that rips off and this yeah. is that's what can cause this to back out right and then you don't know that's happened no you won't know it's happened until you lose your timing yeah. loosen that off again there's a little key so we will need to get that key out yeah because that will stop that shaft yeah. from yeah. pulling through so just free v8 twin turbo we spent an hour talking about the cars, didn't we? <laughs> Before we even got onto the bikes. Funny how every every uh, most motorcyclists are petrol heads that like cars as well yeah, as. Yeah. Uh... No. Oh, there you go. Can I see him. Yep, got it. Yeah, it's not been apart before, no. which is a good sign. You can tell that because it's got it's got the factory lock tight on every on every uh, yeah. internal. Bolt. When the guy, when they had it, he even had the baffle running in the turn, so... Oh, did he? You know, yeah, so... <laughs> not a proper GK no, owner not then, no. Just, no. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't your normal hypermotard hooligan, you know what I mean? He, he had the baffle All, Always up on one wheel, <laughs> yeah, you mean? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And the front tyre was even bald, so... There you go, pretty yeah, straightforward. Yeah. yeah. So there's a gasket that sits there yeah. and you can tell it's not been apart because personally when I when I um, put these back together I always put a little bit of free bond on right. these as well and they don't on the, from the factory. so they don't they're dry from the factory yeah, I'll take that away and I'll, I'll yeah. repaint that okay so it's ready to split that's apart it, ready to split really? yeah that's it how many bolts we've got holding it together now? right so there are one here one there yeah. And we'll just pop those now. Yeah. And then on the other side is the vast majority of the bolts. And then we've got obviously the outer case bolts as well. But yeah. these are the main um, main case bolts, basically. The ones we're going to be taking out of here are the M8s right. that do the job of applying the torque in the right places. And they're only done to 20... 25 newton meters, I think, oh, really? something like that off the top of my head. They're quite, quite loose. Obviously, on that side, that's everything done case wise. So we yep. just flip it back over. Right, and now you get into the masses that we have to take off. So you've got internal and external bolts. So internally, we've got a couple more M8s yeah. and then an oil feed one. This one's always the first one I take out because it's hollow. Right, okay. So I take that one out so you're not putting any extra 
uh, tension on it right, when down. the case is pulling slightly. Then you've got a couple of M6s, and then you've got M6s all the way around, yeah. two more M8s, and then another M6 at the right. top of the case. Very we loosen all the M6s first, because they're obviously the weaker bolts. Yeah. Oh, they're tight. Right, so let's just buzz these yep. out. <laughs> right, okay, so now we've got to split the cases. So what I'm just going to do is a couple of bits that I like to do before we split. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right, oh, there's a bit of sludge there. Let's get the strainer out on this side. A couple of little bits of metallic yeah. debris. It's not unexpected. That's obviously the gauze of the actual yeah, strainer, yeah. so there's nothing to worry. I mean, that's... That's probably one of the cleanest I've seen in a long really? time, actually. Really? Yeah. yeah. Normally, you get quite a lot of build debris. Um, like there, you can see like yeah. the instant gasket material. Yeah. You usually get quite a bit of that. But I mean, if it's been serviced, it would have been cleaned regularly. Yeah. So it should, I suppose it's not that surprising. The only thing that's holding it together now is you've got a dowel there. Yeah. Uh, there's another dowel here. Okay. And then it's just the instant gasket that yeah. sits sits around it, so it should come come apart quite good. Oh, actually, that might um, might have already split. Looking at the way that oil's oh, coming really? out of the centre. Oh, coming out the actual join. Yeah, we might get lucky here. Eh? Get lucky, John. This Good might be a quick so pop apart one. Right. There you go. She's popping That's already. It, popping already. Here, change sound, go time, yeah. can't you, when it goes. There we that go. Sounds like it. Look at that, she's apart. She's apart. Nothing, nothing bad in there, actually. It's effectively, it's um, just getting the parts out yeah, of there now. Yeah, pulling it out the other, so, side, the other side, basically. Crank just pulls up. Right, there you go. crank. And we'll pop that apart in a second to have a look at the yeah. big ends. Okay. Take out your selector fork. That means you can get the selector drum out. Okay. And again, there's shims on both ends. So make sure you grab that shim. Okay. And then there's that shim at the top end there as well. Looking at the selector forks, you're looking for wear on the back and front. Check if there's any wear on the yeah. leading edges, and they're they're in really nice condition actually. Yeah. You know, I think it reflects the fact that, like you say, the mileage is yeah. kind of low. There's little bits of wear, but clean edges. Nothing to worry. Nothing, nothing to, worry, nothing to about. worry about at all. I think here. Let's just get the last one just yeah. before I eat my words. Yeah. No, good. Definitely happy with those. Makes a change. I normally get stitched up and I've got the, got the dog. <laughs> so this is a nice change. We do, get the gear cluster out. Lift it out. Just lift it out. So there's a couple of bits you're looking for on your gears. So you've got the dogs, yeah. which are the bits that drive into and each out of each gear. So they, they're the bits that sort of like your selector forks are moving in and out. So you're just looking for any sort of wear. They look pretty good. And then on the teeth, you're just looking for any sort of signs of pitting or damage or broken teeth, and yeah. you've got nothing there. These are really nice, actually. And then that one, same again, it looks really good. So again, you're looking for where the, so it's a little, so you've got a little bit of burr in. Somebody's jumped gears a couple yeah. of time, but you know you're just looking to see do you have clean faces? And again, no massive issues. A little bit of wear marks on some of the gear teeth, but it's all even. There's no pitting. Yeah, so you're good.
<laughs> so I've got to say a humongous thanks to Nelly for getting involved with this project. I couldn't have tackled that myself. All those special tools, all that know-how, even, the, uh, even if you've got the manual, it doesn't tell you how to do that stuff and the feel you need for that stuff. So massive thanks to Nelly for helping out there. The next video, I've got to get all of those casings stripped, Cerakoted. Nelly's actually lent me some old casings so we can put this on my casings and get the whole thing blasted and painted because, because of course, when you're blasting for paint, you've got to be really, really careful that you don't get any blast media left in the engine. That when it's put back together, that'll obviously just destroy the engine. So. I've got some casings to put on for the blasting. Adam's gonna do the Cerakoting. I've gotta get the crank balanced. I've gotta order about a thousand pounds worth of Ducati parts, washers, bearings to rebuild that bottom end, just before Christmas as well. And then we can get back to Nelly's house, put the whole thing back together. So I think, to be honest, realistically, it's gonna be two or three weeks until the next video, but I'll bring it to you as soon as I can. There will be no more big delay in this project so uh, once that engine's ready and I've got everything together we'll see you back at Nelly's place for the reassembly but huge thanks to Nelly for helping out absolutely amazing but thanks guys thanks for watching as always and I will see you see you on the next video cheers <laughs>